I have a very special video for today. I am at the very first VinFast dealership in the United States. This is Leith VinFast of Cary, and they have around 70 of the VF8 model vehicles in stock. In fact, I am showing you six of the eight colors that they have for this car. Let's get started. I will walk around the VF8 and show you the specs on the screen. The dimensions are very similar to the Tesla Model Y at 187 inches long by 76.1 inches wide and 65.6 inches high. This is a 400 volt system with a net 87.7 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. The range is 264 miles on the Eco and 243 miles on the Plus trim. Charging speeds are from 10 to 70% is 31 minutes. Dual motor with front and rear design and a max power rating of 349 horsepower on the Eco and 402 horsepower on the Plus. The vehicle warranty is 10 years, 125,000 miles. Hi, this is Duncan and we are at Leith Vinfast in Cary, and he's gonna show us around the new VF8, which just got released. Is it, uh, when did it come out? Um, so the VF8 was part of their lineup that they started in 2022 when they completely redid their whole uh, lineup. Uh, they originally, VinFast was originally created in 2017, and they tried the standard engines and uh, a couple electrics, but they found it wasn't working. So 22, they redid the whole lineup and the VF8 was born. And now there's about five other models uh, going from the VF5 all the way up to the VF9. Okay, so this is right in the middle towards the high end as far as size, it's a mid-size, would you size, say? It's more of a crossover. Okay. Um, it's gonna be a little bit on your bigger side, a little more room in the second row, as well as the trunk space. Um, once we get down to like the VF6 and VF7, that's gonna be your smaller ones, similar to a uh, traditional compact SUV or a subcompact SUV. Mm -hmm. But this will be a little bit more on the, the bigger end. <clears throat> okay. Uh, can you show us some interesting things on the exterior? So right here we have the 20 inch wheels. Uh, the VF8 comes in 19 inch or 20 inch rims um, with this being the 20. Right here, this is gonna be your charging port. Um, so I can open it up real quick. We have the VinFast symbol up here, and this actually will change color based on the charging state. There's a little infographic right here. Uh, solid green means you're charged up, ready to go. Uh, blinking green means it's currently charging. Red being there's a, some sort of fault, uh, maybe with the system itself, uh, or maybe the plug's not plugged all the way in. Mm -hmm. And yellow meaning it's authenticating. So whatever charging station you're using is preparing to, to start charging. Uh, it does have the <clears throat> ability for the fast charger right here um, and takes all sorts of chargers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, estimate of when uh, they're going to have a Tesla port on? So I don't know if that's been announced not, right or not. Right now, um, I know that they're trying to work on getting Tesla into, the sys or into their network. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as a date, I don't know when. Uh, I'm sure... I don't know when we'll hear something about that, but I know they're... I know most manufacturers, it's like 2025 is like, I think the date that they're they're looking at, so... I, I know that they're working towards, I just, I don't have a date at this okay. time. No problem. Um, but going past here, we do have your fold-in mirrors, so when you're locking the car, um, they'll fold in to make sure you know they're locked. Turn signal around here to let oncoming traffic know that you're trying to turn. Um, <clears throat> we do have keyless entry right here if you need to lock the car with this little button. Um, can go ahead and show you how to lock and unlock from there as well. Mm -hmm. um, other models, like the VF9, uh, actually all other models are going to have flush handles. And hopefully soon, 2025 perhaps, uh, the VF8 will have flush handles just like the rest of them. Really give it that clean exterior look. Sure. Um, <clears throat> going towards the back, we do have the brake lights accentuating the V all the way. Headlights are very much the same fashion, uh, full full door headlights just to make sure that people know that you're braking and uh, coming fully LED, um, fully LED yep. Yep. Uh, is there um, is it matrix LED do you know or I do not know okay uh, yeah I'm, I'm not uh, some some companies are starting to do that because it was just 
I think, um, legal in the U.S. Uh, for the longest time, the uh, the National Transportation Safety, you know, nixed it. Really? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I do so. not know exactly which LEDs they are. Um, also, with the Plus, you have the automatic uh, tailgates as well as a foot kick tailgate under here, um, as I just showed you. Mm -hmm. On the Eco, you're not going to have that. It's going to be mechanical with the button right here. Gotcha. To lift up. But in the back, we do have a little bit of trunk space. It comes with a level one charger. That should really be used more of a, uh, like a spare tire. Um, emergency, take, yeah. Emergency, yeah. Yep. It's going to take a while if you're using it at home uh, to fully charge the vehicle. Uh, we have some extra floor mats back here. Now, the second row does recline a little bit, and you can see there's spots for some aftermarket covers if you have. Uh, Is there any space under the, the floor? Yes, yeah, so there is floor for a spare tire right now. Oh. We do not currently have a spare tire. We have fillant um, for you. I don't know if they're planning on adding spare tires as part of it. Uh, I know there Looks like if issue. there's room, somebody could buy, purchase one and add one. Potentially, I know yeah. with electric vehicles, they run a little heavier on their tires, which might be the issue. Um, yeah, we have different tools back here to make sure that if you have, a, or if you run into a flat, you can get to a nearby station. <clears throat> Yeah. A good view of the back area here. Got some LED lighting, I see, mm -hmm. to see when it's in the dark. And there is some ambient lighting uh, in the cabin as well. It's going to mm -hmm. be a little hard to see right now with the sun being out. But, sure. Uh, I'll show you once we get down to the interior where they are. Okay. <clears throat> I guess the last exterior thing would be um, the front trunk. Yep, absolutely. I will say there is blind spot monitoring right here. Uh, you can see on the symbols. Uh, pretty standard for most vehicles. It's, okay, mm -hmm. right on There's the mirror. Little, That's good. It'll flash LED once uh, you yep. actually... Yep. Flash. The cars that don't have it on the mirrors, I don't care for. My, I have you're instinctively truck. looking at the mirrors, so it's it's. I like that. So that's I'm definitely with, a good feature. I have a Nissan Sentra and they're like on the inside strip by the, mm -hmm. by the dash and it, I wish they were on the mirrors. But. To open the front, what you do is, where a traditional car would have their hood latch right here, you can pull it once and then you pull it twice and that will unlock the, uh, the front. Uh, this one is getting stuck. In just one second, I'm going to try and redo it. Alright. Actually, Amber, if you wouldn't mind helping me real quick. Absolutely. So we've been in a little bit of a rush to get things out. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. So if you wouldn't mind just pulling up on the trunk, I'm going to hold this open. Yeah, it doesn't have a latch. No, it does not. It's just, pull you just it pull it in. Mm -hmm. There we go. So it's an easy fix for this. Um, there are a couple screws right here that just need to be adjusted. Um, very likely this one. I'll let one of our service managers do that. As I'm a little out of my element with that. But sure. You can see there's a little bit of space here, it's typical for some groceries and things like that. Right here we have the fuse box for technicians to get to your vehicle. Up here we have your 12 volt battery in, or, uh, ports. So we oh yeah, positive and negative terminals, mm -hmm. yep. So we can lift up those terminals if you need to charge that in a state of emergency. And then the wiper fluid right here. Convenient, close. Oh, yeah. Yes, I like that. No digging around for it. Yep. Um, <laughs> and a little button too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. What are these? Uh, that, I is that just not, and no. maybe that might be for something underneath mm -hmm. uh, for the technicians? I've looked underneath and there's a lot of a lot of different things that I don't fully understand. Sure. But, yeah. Um, we'd have to ask a technician. That's nice. And we're since we're up here, I'll take a closer mm -hmm. look at the headlights. So you can see the LED modules right along here, and we have um, not sure which one is the high beam, but there's probably low beam and high beam there. We have daylight, daytime running lights there. Very nice look. And there's a sensor down here. This looks like a, a radar sensor, most likely for, yeah, that's um, most likely for the uh, the lane keep and uh, and uh, level two driving. Could be. I know that the, I think the front collision warning camera is up at the top. 
top middle of the windshield. Uh, I think that's where it has the emergency uh, braking right there. Mm -hmm. and then to close it, you just gotta just push slam it down. Oh yeah, slam gotcha. it down. Gotcha. It's not like a traditional one; you have to drop it. Oh, uh, since we're also out here, does the is the roof a panoramic? It is a panoramic sunroof. Is uh, it a um, a sealed or is it open? Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, does it open up or? Yeah, so uh, this middle part will slide back to about here. Okay. Um, and that is on the plus only. Uh, the Eco is not going to have that sunroof. Um, and then That's nice because a lot of cars only have a panoramic and mm -hmm. you have no option if you want to have air, you know, open up. Absolutely. On top. Up with a little screen to protect some leaves from getting in there and stuff. Uh, That's definitely a nice feature. Once we get on the inside, I'll show you. There's actually a, a fabric screen that goes ahead of that in case. Mm -hmm. I know Teslas have like that plastic glass that's mm -hmm. always up there. Um, if it's too sunny out, you can have a screen block that. I also noticed that there's a rear wiper that's it tucked away. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. It is right under the the i guess the aero shield up here where the third brake light is so i know uh, some evs don't have rear wipers which makes things difficult in the winter or in the rain so that's definitely a great feature to have and i noticed that the the rear lights kind of mimic the front they do yep it's got a, a cohesive look to it a little low Let's see the lights and this looks absolutely gorgeous at night when you can really mm -hmm. get the lighting on the V as well. Same thing with the front. So the key fob, you have your alarm, unlock, lock, and then the trunk. Um, again, on the Plus, it's going to have an automatic trunk. The Eco will have a manual trunk. Uh, but there's no remote start on this. Mm -hmm. That, there's an app with VinFast that will get every customer set up with once they purchase a vehicle. Um, and that'll have their remote start on there or the preconditioning for the battery as well as some of the navigation mm -hmm. features. Let's talk about uh, paint, colors. paint colors. There's eight, if I'm not mistaken. There are eight exterior paint colors. We have a black, a silver, a gray, a white, a blue, red, and a green. A deep green, similar like old school Jaguars. Um, they're really beautiful. I personally am a big fan of the crimson red. Um, we also have four interior colors, that being black and navy, which looks really cool, and uh, cotton beige, similar to like white, as well as the saddle brown interior. So if customers want, they can go for that classic Jaguar with the deep green and the brown interior. Um, but there's options out there for anybody. Here we have a view of the inside. This is the door panel. We have soft touch up top, a brush metal here, speaker grill we have a very nice soft faux leather armrest we have buttons we have a hand grip for the door down below we have the speakers we have a pocket here and hard plastic let's get a look at the seats we have the seat controls right here and the seats themselves, this is a vegan leather. Very nice saddle brown color. Here are the pedals. Got some nice aluminum pedals here. The dash has a nice soft touch stitched leatherette surface. There's the opening for the heads up display. In the center console area here, we have an armrest storage area. Fairly nice size. We have controls here for window lock. This is a volume button on off for the audio system, hazard lights, two cup holders, the drivetrain buttons for park, reverse, neutral, and drive. In front of that, we have a Qi charger, two USB ports. We have HVAC vents right here, as well as one on the left and one on the right side of the passenger area. Above that, we have a very large 15-inch display. 
Looking up, we have a mirror. We have lights. Here are the controls for the sunroof. Let me show you when you close the shade. Comes from the back and is all the way to the front. And it's a full blocking shade. It's not translucent, so this will offer very good protection against the sun if you don't want to have the sun overhead. Let me open that up. And then I'll also show venting. Here is the vented sunroof. And then if you want to fully open it, slide it down. And there it is. Let me get a view from outside. Here are the visors. And they do extend. Let's take a look at the back seat. Very similar door panel as the front. Here is the back seat area. Pull down the center portion here, and we have pop out cup holder that will go back in there we have seats that are adjustable you can recline these on the back of the front seat we have a little storage pocket here in the center we have the two rear vents along with two USB-A and one USB-C port in the middle. All right, I'm sitting in the back. There is plenty of headroom here. I'm five foot 11. Get a nice view around here. Up above, we have a panoramic roof that's split into two sections. The front can actually open. And here's a view of the dash area. button right there for the powered hatch. Just want to show another view of this area here. There's an LED light and a 12 volt power source right here. I do not see any buttons for reclining the seats. Let's see how those work. Oh, before I do that, let's get another look at under here. Definitely a spare tire will fit in this area. We have tire sealant and more storage in this styrofoam subfloor. You can also recline the seats by using that button. This is the most upright position, and that's the most reclined position. You can see the difference from the right side to the left side there. There's a bar right here. 
that you pull on and the seats fold. Let me get the other side. Here's a view with all the seats folded. Pretty spacious cargo area. Here you can see the two cameras. We have our backup camera and surround view cameras. A button to close. The lift gate. There we go. Quick overview of the VinFast VF8. This is the Plus version. There's also an Eco version. And there we go. We have nice stitching on the dash. We're not even in sport mode. <laughs> We've got drive modes. Sure you hear. Let's try not to scare everybody. <laughs> we'll drive, but um, yeah. And in the plus model, that's where the Alexa comes in. But this mm -hmm. will. This is. It's configured when they take delivery these are not configured yet but you can say Alexa open my sunroof you can which by the way it does have a fully opening sunroof mm -hmm. uh, which some EVs do not have at all but they do on the plus only um, I think the biggest thing for this car for this brand is the battery guarantee because the battery guarantee is unlimited for 10 years mileage unlimited and even if i sell this car to someone else they get it transfers wow it transfers that, that's so pretty impressive unlimited to me people so many people are worried because they've seen battery incidents happen sure and uh the repairs can be costly but it's covered with this automaker with uh, VinFast, and that to me is the biggest difference. Yeah, that definitely gives peace of mind. Mm -hmm. I know, um, yeah. you know, just just ten years is impressive as it is, uh, but unlimited miles even better for those people that drive a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I know a lot of cars are very upset without seatbelts on, so I totally get that too. All right, okay. brake, foot on brake. Mm -hmm. This car does not have um, a button to turn on, correct? It is basically you sit in the seat and it turns on. You, um, you lock it when you walk away, you mm -hmm. lock it and that will turn it off. Yeah. So you just need your foot on the brake and put it in drive. Mm -hmm. If everybody's buckled up, sometimes everybody's... it will stall and wait for that seat belt. Sure, and I'll, <laughs> yeah. it'll give you a ding yep. sound, I'm sure. All right. And right in front of me is a very bright uh, heads-up display. Very clear. You can hear the turn signal. Nice clicky sound. I've noticed a nice mix of hardware buttons and software on the screen, so that is good. I'm kind of old school. I like having buttons for like my windows mm -hmm. and, and uh, controlling sound and stuff like that. So <laughs> me too. Uh, these days, a lot of buttons are disappearing for putting everything on the screen. <laughs> I think they're starting to come back actually. That's the trend because mm -hmm. people are getting tired of grubby screens even though they are incredibly functional. They can add so much more function than buttons can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but uh, I think a lot of people are purists when it comes to that. And uh, that said, 
your driver information is on the left half of the screen, I've noticed. And then other controls, you can go through menus on the right half of the screen. The bottom looks like it's dedicated for uh, HVAC controls. Looks like you can change drive modes on there too. I love the stitching here on the uh, dash. This is really nice. Okay, just so, go right and go down into this parking lot for a second. We'll just look around, get some views of the screen real quick. Okay. Then we can drive around a little more. First and foremost, hit drive mode down at the bottom. Drive mode there. Mm -hmm. So then you can select your drive modes, which is nice. Like my car, I only drive it in sport. So we have eco, normal, and sport. I can click on sport for the second half of the drive. Uh, creep mode is, um, on a lot of cars, don't have this feature. It's very nice if you have this on, if you let off the brake, the car will keep moving forward mm -hmm. as if it was a regular internal combustion engine car. Mm -hmm. But if you like to be, you know, a, a stop sign or, or something like that, you can turn it off and let your foot off the brake, it'll stay. Uh, won't move on you. Regenerative braking, you've got options for high and low, which is good. I know um, my wife does not like the high regen on the, the car when you let off the accelerator. It, a lot of cars can, uh, can um, you know, um, not be smooth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you get the option for low and high on that. So the screen, we have options for uh, CarPlay, uh, EV. If you click on this, I think it'll bring up your battery info screen. Right now we're looking at 50% battery, giving your expected range, the outside temperature, um, nice little graphic of the battery. Let's see, let me press this one. This gives you your charging info, so we have it set for 70%, which is a good amount. And you can change those numbers there. You got some more options for displaying information of the car on the uh, on the driver's screen. It's nice to have that. And then I guess settings is just uh, general settings for the car. You can go. I'm not going to go through that because there's uh, on most cars now there's hundreds of settings you can go through. So they're usually grouped into categories on the left hand side of the screen, and you can go through and and change those. So. Mm -hmm. Lots of interesting items here. Um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We'll just see what that looks like. I don't have a device connected, but if you did, that would show up in this area right here. Mm -hmm. um, go Anything? ahead and hit the bottom left, the car. Just go straight through the main menu pieces. Yeah, these are quick controls, mm -hmm. it says right here. Mm -hmm. Ambient lighting, uh, you mm -hmm. can adjust the brightness mm -hmm. of that. Of course, we can't see it in the daytime. Uh, display the the display itself. You can adjust brightness. You can change uh, sounds that the car makes, the chimes. You can also go through and uh, change vehicle modes. Uh, this is very handy. A lot of uh, EVs now have these other modes, such as if you have people or animals in the car, you can have the HVAC system running while uh, you're out of the car. And other things like camp mode and valet mode are handy too. Uh, GPS monitoring, that is something that I haven't seen. Um, so I'm guessing it keeps track of your uh, movements. If you want to uh, have your teenager drive your car, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can mm -hmm. keep tabs on them. Um, so that's the quick controls page. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Go down to the bottom and hit the camera. All right. So all the views of the cameras. So we have a bird's eye view mm -hmm. of the top. Mm -hmm. You can... This is not adjustable, right? That is a fixed. You can probably go into the 360 mode if you want, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. there's a mode where you can actually look. So if you're parking the car, you can get a nice view. If you're in, a, for example, a parking garage that has very tight uh, spots with walls and, and uh, barriers, you can look around the car and make sure that you're uh, parking safely. That is a great feature to have. Click on the other buttons. We have your front camera views. The left side view, right side view, the rear backup view, and if you're towing, they actually have a towing mode view there. So it's um, very flexible that it shows the bird's eye view along with the other cameras at the same time. I know a lot of cars don't do that. Usually you have to choose one or the other. So that's definitely an advantage of this car in the uh, 
cameras are very clear. All right. Oh, let's look at the seats. Here's a nice view of the seats. In we, the plus, sorry, let me mm -hmm. tell you, and then yeah. you can edit back. In the plus, you have heated and um, cooled in the back as well. Wow. And you definitely, yeah, so in the plus. The in the Eco in just the plus. does not, but the mm -hmm. plus does. Mm -hmm. And you can control the, the heating on this side and cooling on that side. Very adjustable. Uh, also has uh, steering wheel heat too, which is nice in the winter. And then down here, like I mentioned, there's you can adjust the fan speed and direction of the vents. You can also go through the modes, AC, max AC. Uh, you can go from outside mode. Uh, ion is usually a, uh, a air purifying mode and sink. So lots of options here. Let's get an example of the fans. Very quiet. Yeah. And then uh, we also have our defrosters on the right side there. Uh, let's check out what does this button do? Does that, oh, that goes straight into an app library. Mm -hmm. So you got all the different apps. Um, I take it that over time, VinFast will probably add more apps. Um, I know that's one thing is, um, you know, media apps. Uh, are easy to add these days. So uh, TuneIn is a great app. I use that all the time. Uh, the same with iHeartRadio. Uh, media will uh, play your music through uh, USB ports and there's a lot of different things in here. You got Alexa, you have some games. If you're um, charging your car, you have some time to spend. You got some items here for entertainment, internet browser, map, calendar, lots of good stuff in here. Uh, driving aids. I don't think we saw anything on that here. So there's a bunch of different settings. You can go for driving assistance and uh, safety features. Lots of settings you can customize to your liking. Very flexible with the settings here. All right. Well, let's continue with the drive. Also, uh, buttons on the steering wheel with controls for uh, voice assistant, phone, uh, menu on the left, and you have your controls for the uh, ADAS system on the right hand side. Real buttons, always appreciate it. The steering wheel itself is very comfortable. I like the, the stitching. It has a little extra grip around this area. stiffer suspension in sport mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and anytime you're in sport you feel the road more too right. yeah i can feel it in the steering wheel too
I tend to look for things that other reviewers may overlook. Here is a label under the hood that describes the drive motors as AC synchronous permanent magnet. Also, looking inside the driver's door frame, I took shots of both the Eco and Plus labels. This shows some of the tire information as well as occupant and cargo capacity. Since I had the front area open, I figured I might as well measure it. The width is 30.5 inches or 77.5 centimeters. The depth is 22 inches or 56 centimeters. And the height is roughly 9 inches or 23 centimeters. Here's an example of a level 2 charging station with the VinFast name on it. Standard J1772 connector. Here we have a level 2 charging station. And at the end of the cord, it is plugged into the VF8. Well, that wraps up my visit to the Leith VinFast dealership in Cary, North Carolina, the day after the grand opening. There are a lot of people looking at these EVs, and it will be interesting to see how this new brand will be accepted in the United States. It seems to offer a nice package of features and competes with the Tesla Model Y and other EVs in the compact to midsize CUV and SUV category. While the VFA does not qualify for the 7500 federal tax credit due to it being manufactured in Vietnam, the pricing has been reduced to effectively give the credit to consumers. The tax credit situation may change due to production in North America. The first VinFast factory in the United States is being built right now about 20 miles to the west of my location in Chatham County, North Carolina. This is a very large 2,000 acre site that represents a $2 billion phase one. This will include production for electric cars, buses, and lithium batteries. Production is expected to be about 150,000 vehicles a year. This is the very first auto factory in North Carolina and will employ thousands of local people. Thanks to Amber and Duncan for giving me a tour of the VinFast VF8 and taking time to answer my questions. And speaking of questions, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. What do you think of the VinFast VF8? I look forward to the upcoming VF9, which is a full-size SUV that should be arriving in a couple months. Until then, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.